Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. And today we're going to be covering 1 Kings 3 through 5 and Luke 20, 1 through 26. Father, I just ask for the clarity of voice so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and for those who have tuned in today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Alrighty, Solomon asks for wisdom. 1 Kings 3 Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married his daughter. He brought her to the city of David until he finished building his palace and the temple of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. The people, however, were still sacrificing at the high places because a temple had not yet been built for the name of the Lord. Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the instructions given him by his father David, except that he offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon and to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place. And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the, that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the, light, the night in a dream. And God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern the people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? And the Lord was pleased with Solomon. He had Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administrating justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. And then Solomon awoke, and he realized it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Lord Covenant, and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he gave a feast for all his court. A Wise Ruling 1 Kings 3.16 now two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, Pardon me, my lord. This woman and I live in the same house, and I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. During the night, this woman's son died 
because she laid him laid on him so she got up in the middle of the night and stood and took my son from my side while I your servant was asleep she put him in her breast and put her dead son in my breast the next morning I got up to nurse my son and he was dead but when I looked at him closely in the morning light I saw that it was not my son I had born the other woman said no the living one is my son and the dead one is yours but the first one insisted no the dead one is yours and the living one is mine and so they argued before the king and the king said this one says my son is alive and your son is dead while that one says no your son is dead and mine is alive then the king said bring me a sword so they brought a sword for the king he then gave an order cut the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other the woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love for her son and said to the king please my lord give her the living baby don't kill him but the other one said neither I nor you shall have him cut him in two then the king gave his ruling give the living baby to the first woman do not kill him she is his mother when all Israel heard the verdict the king had given they had the they held the king in awe because they saw that he had wisdom from God to administer justice Solomon's officials and governors first Kings 4 so King Solomon ruled over all of Israel and these were his chief officials Azariah son of Zadok the priest El Harfel El Harf and uh, I Aja Aja son of Shisha secretaries Jehoshaphat son of Alud recorder Benaiah son of Jehodiah commander-in-chief Zadok and Abithar priests Azariah son of Nathan in charge of the district governors Zebud son of Nathan a priest and advisor of the king Ashar place administrator palace administrator administrator Adamnar Adoniram son of Abadah in charge of forced labor Solomon had 12 district governors over his all Israel who supplied provisions for the king and the royal household each one had to provide supplies for a one month in the year these are their names Ben Hur in the hill country of Ephraim Ben Decker in Mechazah Mechaz Shalabim Beth Shemesh and Elon Bethian Ben Hazd in Araboth Soka and all the land of Hepra were his Ben Abned in Naphath Dor he was married to Tab Tapheth, daughter of Solomon. Benana, son of Elud, in Tanech, the Migadad, and all and in all of Bethshan, next to Zarathan, below Jezreel. Both Bethshan and Abilene 
Mulaha across to Jokoman. Ben, ben Geber in Ramoth, Galide, Galilee, Galilee, the settlement of Jair, son of Manesh, of Galilee, were his. All was as the region of Argob and Bashan and the sixty large walled cities with bronze gates and bars. Anadad, Anadab, son of Ido, Idio, Ididu, Ididu. Sorry about that. Ahanabad, son of Idio, in Mahanium. Ahamez in Nephetali, he had married Besmeth, daughter of Solomon. Bena, son of Hushai, in Asher and in Alath. Jehoshaphat, son of Pura, in Essachar. Shemia, son of Ella, in Benjamin. And Gerber, son of Uri, in Galide, the country of Shion, king of the Amorites, and the country of Og, king of Bashan. He was the only governor over the district. Solomon's Daily Provisions. Second Kings for the people. Or 420. There we go. The people of Judea and Israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. Yet uh, they ate, and they they ate, and they drank, and they were happy. And Solomon ruled over all of the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. These countries brought tributes and were Solomon's subjects all his life. Solomon's daily provisions were 30 cores of the finest flour and 60 cores of meal, 10 heads of stall-fed cattle, 20 of pasture-fed cattle, and 100 sheep and goats, as well as deer, gazelles, Robux and a choice fowl, for he ruled over. For he ruled over all the kingdoms west of the Euphrates River, the Tipash, Tipasha, to Gaza, and had peace on all sides. During Solomon's lifetime, Judea and Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, lived in safety everyone under their own vine and under their own fig tree. Solomon had 4,000 stalls of chariot horses and 12,000 horses. The district governors, each in his month, supplied provisions for King Solomon and all who came to the king's table. They saw to it that nothing was lacking they also brought to the proper place their quotas, their quotas of barley and straw for the chariot horses and the other horses. Solomon's Wisdom, 1 Kings 4, 29 God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight and a breath of understanding as measureless as the sands of the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was great and then the wisdom of was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the east and greater than the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else including Ethan and Ezareth, Ezerhite. Wiser than Heman, Kelkal, and Dorada. 
the son of Mahal, Mahal. And his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 uh, proverbs, and his son's songs numbered 8,005. He spoke about plant life from the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssops and that grew out of walls. He also spoke about animals and birds, reptiles and fish. From all nations, people came to listen to Solomon's wisdom, sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. Preparations for building the temple, 1 Kings 5. When Haram, king of Tyre, heard that Solomon had been anointed king to succeed his father, David, he sent his envoys to Solomon because he had always been on friendly terms with David. Solomon sent back the message to Haram sent back this message to Haram. You know that because of the wars waged against my father David from all sides, he could not build a temple for the name of the Lord his God until the Lord put his enemies under his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side, and there is no adversary or disaster. I intend, therefore, to build a temple for the name of the Lord my God. As the Lord told my father when he said, Your son, who I will put in the throne in your place, will build the temple for my name. So give orders that cedars of Lebanon be cut for my name. And my my men will work with yours, and I will pay you for your men, whatever wages you set. You know that we have no one so skilled in feeling in fall, in felling timbers as the Sidian, Sidian, the Sidonians. We're Hiram when Hiram heard Solomon's message, he was greatly pleased and said, Praise be the Lord today. He has given David a wise son to rule over this great nation. So Hiram sent word to Solomon, I have received the message that you sent me and will do all that you want in providing the cedars and juniper logs. My men will haul them down from Lebanon to the Mediterranean Sea, and I will float them as rafts by the sea to the place you specify. There I will separate them, and you can take them away. And you are to grant my wish by providing food for my royal household. In this way, Haram kept Solomon's supplied with all the cedar and juniper logs he wanted. And Solomon gave him Aram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household, in addition to 20,000 beds of pressed olive oil. Solomon continued to do this for Aram year after year. The Lord gave Solomon wisdom, just as he had promised him. There were peaceful relations between Haram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty. King Solomon cons conscripted laborers. King Solomon conscripted labor laborers from all Israel, thirty thousand men. He sent them off to Lebanon in shifts of ten thousand a month, so that they spent one month in Lebanon and two months at home. Adonariam was in charge of the forced labor. Solomon had 70,000 carriers and 80,000 stonecutters in the hills, as well as 3,300 foremen who supervised the project and directed the workers. 
At the king's command, they removed from the quarry large blocks of high-grade stone to provide a foundation of dressed stone for the temple. The craftsmen of Solomon and Haram and the workers from Bibalos cut and prepared the timber and stone for the building of the temple. That concludes 1 Kings 3 through 5. And so now we will move into Luke 20, 1 through 26. The authority of Jesus questioned. 20. One day as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple courts and proclaiming the good news, the chief priests and the teacher of the law, together with the elders, came up to him. Tell us, well, by what authority are you doing these things? They said, Who gave you this authority? He replied, I will ask, also ask you a question. Tell me, John's baptism, was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask why don't why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, all the people will stone us because they are persuaded that John was a prophet. So they answered, We don't know where it was from. And Jesus said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The Parable of Tenants he went on to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers, and went away for a long time. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant, but uh, that one also they beat and treated shamefully, and sent away empty-handed. He sent still a third, and they wounded him and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, Well, what shall I do? I will send my son, whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they talked, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said. Let's kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? Will he come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others? Or when, when the people heard this, they said, God forbid. Jesus looked directly at them and asked, Then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who fall, fails on this stone, everyone who falls on this stone, everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, and anyone whom it falls will be crushed on whom it falls will be crushed sorry about that uh, the teacher of the law and the chief priests looked for a way to arrest him immediately because they knew he had spoken this parable against them but they were afraid to afraid of the people paying taxes to Caesar Luke 20, 20. Keeping a close watch on him, they sent spies, who pretended to be sincere. And they hoped to catch Jesus in something he said, so that they might hand him over to the powers and authorities of the governor. So these spies questioned him, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. 
is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He saw through their duplicity and said to them, Show me a Daenerys, whose image is inscripted on it. Caesar's, they replied. He said to them, Then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. They were unable to trap him in what he had said there in public, and astonished by his answer, they became silent. And that concludes Luke 21 through 26, which in turn concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2020 for today. Uh, tomorrow we will be covering. Uh, let's see, what will we be covering tomorrow? First Kings six through seven and Luke twenty twenty seven through forty seven. Okay, Father, I just thank you for that blessing of the word that you have given us today, and that you have let me be your messenger. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. All right, this has been Shenandoah Briscoe, your messenger of the Word of God, saying thank you and God bless you. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow because, well, hey, I'll be here and I hope that you are too.